Now here's a technique for creating a carved in stone effect entirely here in Photoshop. So the first thing I need to do is right here in the background layer, I'm going to go ahead and fill this with a neutral 50% gray. I'll just do a shift delete or shift backspace. Bring up the fill dialog and we're going to make sure we're using 50% gray, normal blending mode, hit OK. Now, I'm going to duplicate this background layer by dragging it down here to the new layer icon. And on that copy layer, making sure that we have our foreground and background colors set to their default black and white, I'm going to go under Filter and go to Render Clouds. That will give us a basic cloud fill there. Next thing I want to do is on that same layer, we're going to go under Filter again, and this time we're going to go to Artistic to Poster Edges. And we're going to get a, another giant dialog box here. And what I really want to pay attention to is the black splotchiness that's going on in here because we're going to generate a selection out of that to, to add to our effect here in a minute. So in order to change the randomness of that I could just move this edge thickness around and you can see it gives us an entirely different effect altogether. But I'm going to go and leave it at 1 and that will give me the effect I want. Now the edge intensity doesn't really do anything here because we don't have a whole lot of variation of colors here. And a posterization, if I drop this down you can see does a few things, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it to its full posterization, almost as if it still is the full render of clouds, just because when we bring it into channels in a second, you'll see that we need to get rid of all that anyway. So, leaving those where they're at, I'm going to hit OK. So there we get that effect there. Now, I'm going to do Command or Control A and select this entire layer. I'm going to copy this to the clipboard, Command or Control C. We're going to go to the Channels palette, and we're going to make a new alpha channel here. We're going to paste that layer inside of here. That would be Command-V, or Control-V. I'm going to deselect that. Now, like I said, I want to make all those black splotchy areas a selection. And doing that in this channel, the first thing I need to do in order to do that is bring up my levels. I'm going to do Command or Control-L. Now over here, I'm going to take this white highlight slider and push it all the way to the left here. And that will get rid of all those gray areas, turning them all white. So just hit OK. Now, like I said, I want to make those black splotchy areas my selection. So as you know, in a channel, alpha channel, anything that's white will be an active selection, and anything that's black will not be selected. So I just simply have to invert this channel, Command or Control I. And to load it as a selection, I'll just hold down my Command or Control key, click on that channel, and we'll go back to our main channels, back into our layers palette, and on that layer that we applied the effect to originally, all those black areas are now selected, and I'm simply going to hit delete. And we'll just deselect that. So we've deleted all those black areas that were part of that effect in there. So, now, because it's transparent, seeing through that other layer, we're, we're going to be able to see the effect we're about to do a little bit better. So I'm going to double click on that layer, and bring up the layer styles, Right, like that. And the first thing I want to activate is a drop shadow. And you can see it's there, but it's a little bit more than I want it to be. I'm actually going to drop the distance down to 2 and the size to 2 as well. Just like that. Zoom in a little bit more. But actually, I okayed out of the layer styles before I was done. So we'll bring that back up. I also wanted to activate the bevel and emboss. And it's a little too much, so I'm going to highlight that. We're going to go over here to the size right here and actually change this to 1. And that will give us a much more realistic effect there. I'm actually going to change this, the highlights, to overlay, so it's not so harsh. And that looks pretty good. So we'll just hit OK. So that almost completes our stone texture. Not just yet, though. What I need to do now is still on this layer, we're going to go under Filter and go to Noise and Add Noise. And we're not going to do a whole lot of noise, right about 5 with a Gaussian monochromatic. That all looks pretty good. And we'll hit OK. I'm also going to apply that same noise to the background, the bottom layer here, this layer we filled with just plain gray that we started with. And I'm just going to reapply that noise by hitting Command or Control F. And there you can see there. So if I turn this layer on and that layer on, we're getting a pretty cool kind of textured stone effect. So having that done, we need to apply it to something. We're going to have to 
have some text carved out of here. And I've already got some text set on this group right here. I turn that on here, you can see we have the word stone, appropriately enough. Now what I need to do, I'm going to load this text as a selection by command or control clicking right directly on that text layer. I'm going to turn this off for now because I don't need it at this very second. But I'm going to go back to that textured layer and I'm going to click on the layer mask icon here. And what it does is by default it's going to generate the mask based on that selection. So what it has done is masked out the background and leaving the stone texture inside the text. And I actually want it to do the opposite. I want it to the stone texture to be around the background and leaving the te text area completely masked out. So to do that, to fix that, all I got to do is really just hit Command or Control I in the layer mask and it will invert that. So I'm going to zoom in here just a little bit. Now, by default, it has filled it with 100% black, the mask. And you know, as anything that's in a layer mask filled with black is going to be completely masked out 100%. I don't want it completely masked out. I actually want some of this texture to be showing through inside the text here. So I'm going to go back into this layer mask and command or control click on the layer mask loading it as a selection. Now of course like an alpha channel it loads the white area as the selection. And as you can see here the white area is in fact the background but I want to select the text. So I'm just going to invert that selection by holding down shift command or shift control I. So now we have the text inside this layer mask selected. Now I'm going to bring up my fill dialog as I did earlier, shift delete or shift backspace. So there we have the fill and I want to fill it with 50% gray just like we did before. So hit OK and now you can see that some of that texture, if I deselect this, some of that texture is actually showing through via the layer mask and it's only mask masking out about 50% of it because of the 50% gray we filled it with. It's not doing a complete masking using black but just slightly masking using a little bit of gray. Now, to give that text a little bit more depth into that cart, to give it a more realistic effect that it's carved in, I'm going to activate this text once again. I'm going to double click on the blank area here just to bring up the layer styles on this text layer. Now the first thing I want to do is actually this fill opacity right here. I'm going to drop this to zero because I don't want any pixels on this layer visible. But by dropping the fill opacity and not the overall opacity, if I bring this back up, this will drop the overall opacity of the layer. And I don't want to do that because it will, ma it will even if I apply any styles, it will completely drop the opacity out, out altogether. The fill opacity just drops the opacity of the pixels. It will not reduce the opacity of any styles I apply. So with that set to zero and I activate my inner shadow, you can see it's visible there. Go back into the settings here and increase the distance, drop the opacity just a little bit, just like that. And we'll hit OK. And now, there we have our stone carved in, carved in stone as, it's, as it were. So there it is. All completely done right there in Photoshop. And if I wanted to, I could take this a bit further. I could go actually go in this layer mask, brought this back up and go get a very, really small paintbrush and just add to this by giving it a few more cracks in there as if the lettering is you know really aged in there you really could spend quite a bit of time on this but basically that's how you do it so give it a try yourself and we'll see you next time